during Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks, the Samaritans made one of their three yearly pilgrimages to the top of Mount Garrison. There is today a national park of the State of Israel. Today we will visit there. Welcome to Mount Gerizim, also known as Har Bracha, the Mountain of Blessing. We are now in the heart of Samaria, at an altitude of 886 meters above sea level. Mount Gerizim holds the story of one of the most ancient and captivating communities in Israel, the Samaritans. The mountain is holy to the Samaritans, as well as being an archaeological site from the Persian Hellenistic period and the Byzantine period. Let's begin. Exit the foyer and walk towards the first pergola, which is the first stop on the tour, Isaac's Altar. According to Sumerian tradition, this is where the binding of Isaac took place. Later in our tour, we will reach another important site, Gvaot Olam, which means Hills of the World. According to Sumerian tradition, this was the site of the foundation of the world. Here, the Israelites erected 12 stones after they crossed the Jordan River. According to Jewish tradition, all of the events attributed to this site took place at different locations, and the Jews built their holy temple in Jerusalem. So, are the Samaritans Jews? The simple answer is no, they are not Jews, and they do not claim to be Jewish. Jews are the descendants of Judah, while the Samaritans claim that they are the descendants of the tribes of Levi, Ephraim, and Manasseh. They call themselves the observant Israelites, from the Hebrew word Shomer, hence the name Samaritan. Essentially, the Jews and the Samaritans are two different groups. They both originate from the 12 tribes, they share a belief in the same God, and they have similar traditions, but in relation to different sites. If so, when did the Jews and Samaritans split? After the reign of King Saul, David, and Solomon, the united monarchy of Israel broke off, and two sister kingdoms were formed. The Kingdom of Judea in the south, with Jerusalem as its capital, and the Kingdom of Israel in the north, with its capital the city of Samaria, called Sebastia today. In the 8th century BCE, the king of Assyria reached the kingdom of Israel, destroying it and exiling its leaders and some of its population to the east. This event is known as the Exile of Israel or the Assyrian Exile. The Assyrians did not leave the cities of the kingdom of Israel empty, instead populating them with peoples from other regions that they had conquered. During this period, the kingdom of Judea was still sovereign. Less than 150 years later, the Babylonians conquered the kingdom of Judea, destroying Jerusalem and its temple and exiling the population to Babylon. Seventy years later, the members of the tribe of Judah exiled in Babylon returned to Zion to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. Those people who had remained in Samaria and had not been exiled claimed that they were the remaining members of the Israelite people, meaning the descendants of Levi, Ephraim, and Manasseh. After a group of Judeans returned to Zion, these people asked to assist with the construction of the temple in Jerusalem. But the leaders of the Judeans, Ezra and Nehemiah, refused to include them. At this point in time, the split occurred. It became even more pronounced when here on Mount Gerizim, the Samaritan temple complex was erected in the same format as the temple in Jerusalem. Please keep walking on the path. We are looking westward at the Samaritan neighborhood of Kiryat Luza. Today, the Samaritan community is composed of about 850 members, and it is considered one of the smallest ethnic groups in the world. Half of the members of the group live here, and the other half live in the neighborhood of Neve Pinchas in Cholon. These are the only two places in the world where Samaritans live as communities. As we heard earlier, the split between the Samaritans and the Jews began with the return of the Judeans to Zion. Those returning from Babylon brought with them cultural elements from the East that did not exist here previously, such as different handwriting script and different names for the calendar months, while the Samaritans had maintained the custom of the Israelites prior to the exile. The Samaritans sanctified what was already holy prior to the exiles, meaning only the five books of Moses. We are looking northward. The mountain opposite us is the highest mountain in Samaria, soaring to the height of 940 meters above the sea level. This is Mount Eval, also known as the Mountain of Curse. Between us and Mount Eval, the city of Nablus, Shrem, has existed for about 4,000 years. Many stories are linked to Nablus and the surrounding area, 
It is first mentioned in the Bible in the book of Genesis, which mentions that Shechem is the first site in the land of Canaan that Abraham reached. The mountains on either side of the city, Eval and Gerizim, are identified more than anything else with a biblical covenant of blessings and curses. At the event of the blessings and curses, just as the Israelites were entering the land of Israel, Moses announced, On this day you have become a nation. Indeed, after entering the land of Canaan and conquering Jericho and Ai, the twelve tribes arrived here, as Moses had commanded at Mount Nebo, and held this ceremony. It was very significant as it symbolized the continuation of the covenant between the Israelites and their God, the same covenant forged at Mount Sinai. Before your eyes is the sacred precinct on Mount Gerizim. As we mentioned, during the Persian period, a dispute developed between those returning to Zion and the remaining Israelites, who asked to assist those returning Judeans in their efforts to rebuild the temple in Jerusalem. After the request was completely rejected, Sanballat the Horonite, the ruler of Samaria, built the sacred project on Argazim. Around the sacred precinct, the residents began to build a large city which became the spiritual, religious, and administrative center of the Samaritan nation. It united Samaritans in the land of Israel and abroad and reached its peak during the Hellenistic period. However, at the end of the 2nd century BCE, there was a turning point. John Hyrcanus I destroyed the sacred precinct in the community on Argizim and stationed a Hasmonean garrison force at the site to prevent the Samaritans from returning to the mountain. At the time of the great revolt of the Jews against the Romans, the Samaritans joined the rebellion and fortified themselves here on Mount Gerizim. But after the revolt was crushed, they were again distanced from the mountain. Shechem was rebuilt as a Roman city, with a pagan center by the name of Neopolis, meaning a new city north of the sacred precinct, where we are now standing, a temple was built for Zeus. During the Byzantine period, several unsuccessful attempts were made to convert the Samaritans to Christianity. At the peak of the Samaritan rebellions, the Byzantine emperor Zeno decided to expropriate the mountain from them. Right here at the peak, he built a fortified complex atop the ruins of their temple. At its center, on the spot where the temple had stood, he built a magnificent octagonal church in honor of Mary. We can see the ruins of the church here. In the northeastern corner of the square-shaped complex, we can see the tomb of Sheikh Ghanim. According to Muslim tradition, Sheikh Ghanim was one of Saladin's commanders and he died in this spot. Over the years, the Samaritans took advantage of various political developments to return to the mountain and renew their rituals at its sacred sites. You may walk across the Byzantine church and get a closer look at the remaining columns, the capitals, and the mosaics, and then continue to the eastern overlook. This overlook provides a view of modern-day eastern Nablus. The city was built on Tel Balata, which is in fact the site of biblical Shechem. As we mentioned, Shechem is an important biblical city. Abraham reached Shechem on his journey from Haran. Jacob bought a plot of land in Shechem. Joseph searched for his brothers in the fields of Shechem before they sold him as a slave to the group of merchants heading towards Egypt. To this plot of land, Joseph's bones were brought for burial after the Israelites left Egypt. Thousands of years later, a Jew from the Galilee by the name of Jesus of Nazareth passed through here on his way home from Judea on the historical path of the patriarchs. He stopped at the foot of Mount Gerizim at a well called Jacob's Well and asked the Samaritan woman to give him water. Standing by the well, a theological conversation developed, and Jesus of Nazareth compared faith to a flowing spring that quenches a person's thirst forever. After the Samaritan woman realized that the man she was conversing with was not a regular person, she shared the story with the people of her city. And many Samaritans visited Jacob's well to learn from this man offering them water better than the well's water, where the conversation took place with a Samaritan woman next to the ancient well, east of Shechem, and adjacent to the tomb of Joseph, in the plot of land purchased by Jacob, as written in the Bible.